Welcome, everybody. This is Dan Grady, and I hope you are super, super excited for this video tutorial. I know I am, because today we are going to be creating 8-bit style artwork in Illustrator. That opening movie that we have for this video, I created those sprites in Illustrator and animated them in Flash. I'm really excited for this because this is the video game style that I grew up with and it's still very very popular today and it's reused and reused and we see new video games that are made in this retro style. Um, people like to make 8-bit sprites of themselves that they put on their websites and I'm going to be showing you how you can also make existing characters and also you could even create your own sprites using these techniques that I'm going to show you today in Illustrator. I went ahead and set my artboard in a aspect ratio of a 4-3 aspect ratio that's kind of similar to the old style televisions that we typically play these games on. Here's my dimensions I put in. You can do this if you want. 720 pixels by 576 pixels for my height. Uh, you don't need to do that but if you're planning on maybe exporting this to an animation you might want to go ahead and set this the correct size right now. Okay, here I have this Mega Man character that is a bitmap version, so it's all pixelated. Um, this is going to be a reference that I'm going to be using to make actual vector artwork, which can be rescaled and resized without losing uh, any quality that this bitmap image would have. Um, go ahead and make a new color group in your swatches panel because um, I'm going to be using these Mega Man colors, so you can name it Mega Man. There we go, and you'll see that appear in your swatches panel right there. There's my new one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my eyedropper tool. You can use the shortcut I for that, or you can just click it right here in your tools panel. Now I'm going to go over to this bitmap version of Mega Man and I'm going to click, say this, this uh, light blue color shows up right there. I'm going to take that, I'm going to drag that over to the new color group that I created titled Mega Man. So I'm going to have these exact replicated colors that are used in the original. Here's this dark blue, I'll drag that over there as well. And also I'm going to get this skin tone for his face that I will use. I already have the, the black and wide so I'll use the existing ones that are in the swatches panel but now there's my color group everything that I will need for my Mega Man. What we will be needing to make is a rectangular grid that will later become my character sprite. Now to make this rectangular grid you use a tool that to be honest with you I never really use for anything but it is there and it exists in Illustrator it's called the rectangular grid tool. <laughs> and I really don't use this very often, pretty much only for 8-bit art, but this is a good use for it. If you've never used it, you're about to put it to some good use. Um, go ahead and double-click the rectangular grid tool. I set my dividers in the horizontal at 27. My vertical dividers I set at 32. Um, you will need a rectangular grid that will cover your bitmap image that you have if you're using a reference. that will keep it simple. Um, I already had one created here but I'm going to create another about the same size by left clicking and dragging out to create that. Just need it big enough to be able to cover my reference that I'll be using. I'm going to set this as a black stroke on it and I'm going to make this black stroke 0.25 points. Just really small. I just need to be able to see it. I don't want it obstructing the artwork though. Okay, now I have my grid ready to go and my reference right there next to it so I don't have to keep zooming in and out to see uh, the different things. Here's the live paint bucket. Um, shortcut K, we need to convert this grid into a live paint group. So go ahead and select it and with the live paint tool we're going to click that and turn it into a live paint group and as you can see the red on there, wherever I drag it's going to color in an individual square or pixel for the sprite. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just kind of copying uh, this. I'm going to start with the black on the outside border because I think that's an easy reference to start. And as you could see, um, you could also, by using these shortcuts, left and right and up and down, you could actually move through 
the swatches panel with your your uh, bucket tool kind of makes it fast and so you don't have to keep going for the swatches and clicking. Um, I'm going to start over here with this lower left foot and I'm just copying right here. See, I see two squares going horizontal here. I'm going to paint in two, paint in another two going horizontal, paint one going up. You're going to make mistakes as you do this, kind of like this, blah, and make a blob that you don't want, want there. You can either hit Control-Z to get rid of that, or you could set your live paint bucket to a fill of none. And in a sense, you could kind of erase those mistakes like that to get back to where you are on track. Um, just continue this process with the different colors. Um, I'm going to select my black again and keep on going here. It could get monotonous if you're doing an entire background or scene image in 8-bit. It does take a while, but it's totally worth it. Like I said, if you make mistakes like that, just hit Control z or use a fill of none, and it'll kind of erase it. So you keep on tracing through this image right here. Say I wanted to do some of the blue. I'll cl click on the blue here and fill in some of his foot. There we go. Fast forward, super fast forward. <laughs> I've uh, go ahead, went ahead and created the entire Mega Man, and this just took a few minutes um, by matching those pixels in the reference. The very last thing we want to do here is select your artwork and set it to a stroke of none because we don't want the grid to show anymore. Boom. See, now you can't see it anymore. It's still there, but you cannot see it because the stroke is set to none. We do not need this bitmap version anymore because now we have this rock and vector version is so much better. Here's something I want to point out before we go today. Um, if you notice the white in his eyes, if I set a background, I'll make a green ellipse here and put it behind Mega Man. See what happens. Whoa, no. Now you see Mega Man has these radioactive green eyes. We do not want that. And that happened because the white area is set to a fill of uh, none. And we want to make sure that it has white. You will not see a difference um, with the white background here, but it's just something to be aware of while you're creating this 8-bit style artwork that you do not put those white areas as a fill of none or your background will show through. Now, if I set that, ah, much better. That is how we want it. I'm sure you never want the white areas to show through, so just be aware of that. Okay, I'll delete that because we don't need it. Okay, and the best thing is, since this is still a live paint group, if you hit K and you need to make some further alterations, you still can because it's still an active live paint group. Um, if I go down here, here's the characters I made for that opening montage. Let's see what you can create using these techniques in Adobe Illustrator. See you next time.